I also made the case for owning Bitcoin, the quintessence of scarcity premium. Scarcity premium. It's literally the only large tradable asset in the world that has a known fixed maximum supply by its design. The total quantity of Bitcoins cannot exceed 21 million. Bitcoin is the hardest money that has ever been invented. If you don't have my private key, you cannot spend my Bitcoin, period. And this is the power of Bitcoin. This is the first time we figured out how to create true property that you can take possession of with full custodial rights. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another solo rip, number 31, I believe. Even though I am the whole orchestra here, I do the scheduling, I do the clips, I do the interviews, I do everything, and I'm a one band man. I still seem to forget what number I'm on. Uh, and that's because we probably got two chains going here. So I continue to mix them up here. We got about 88 on the main chain. By the way, the last episode with Keith Mukai, if you guys are, if you haven't learned anything in the last few weeks about all this stuff, about FTX, about the exchanges, I'm going to say if you haven't learned anything this year. And by the way, if you haven't learned anything this year about self custody and why you need it and why it's inherent to the protocol, I look forward to seeing you get wrecked. <laughs> um, as Keith was saying, like I really honestly, genuinely, genuinely feel bad for anybody that's going through anything wild through that whole process. But we're here to continue to remind you that Bitcoin custo custody of your Bitcoin is non-negotiable in this protocol. I understand you come from regular fiat banking. I understand that it's easy to just have like a ping, ping, like a little ping, you know, four pin number that you can just get your fake fiat out with. I understand all the convenience that comes with that. But in 88 episodes, I think we've talked about custody here. The majority of those episodes, probably more than 60% of the episodes, we've had guests that talk about custody and why it's important. We had Phil Geiger a few weeks ago, last month. And now we had Keith Mukai showing off that seed signer right, which is like literally a stateless device once it's unplugged that can literally be done with pieces. Like, cause I can't make a code card, right? Like, that's not part of <laughs> my skill set is to be able to weld and get all those chips. But if I could follow a seed, a seed signer guide to get the, the materials I need, as Keith was explaining to us, you basically get the opportunity to, to make multi-sig custody a thing anywhere in the world. And he gave the story about the person that basically lived uh, in the Middle East, I believe, and was like, hey, man, I'm either going to end up on a list of Bitcoiners, which is probably a bad idea here if I order one, or a code card or a treasure or a ledger. It's just never going to get to me. I'm never going to be able to get that. I won't be able to have the privileges that we have here in the United States where now you could just walk into like a Best Buy and pick a cold storage device up. So, man, that conversation with Keith, I didn't expect it. <laughs> to kind of overview that conversation here in the beginning of Solo Rep 30, but it was a very, very fascinating conversation. And he was fresh off of being in El Salvador and giving the education of what multi-sig custody is supposed to be able to allow for you. We all know that cold storage is how we, you know, sleep good at night when people are getting wrecked and rug pulled left and right. But once you start understanding cold storage, you get the other side of cold storage, which is basically... Single SIG is not enough, and single SIG, inherent to the word single, is a single point of failure. And then, you know, that's the next level up. So, you know, Keith, in that episode, talked through a good way to, like, use Blue Wallet, recover the wallet seed words, just so you could get used to that, then move into cold storage, then possibly get a seed signer, set up a quorum, play around with it. I think I even said this in the episode a few months ago with Jevy when we talked about the seed signer. Shout out to Jevy, by the way, that the seed signer you know, by the way it's designed and by the way it is, you know, like the fact that it's stateless, the fact that you have to kind of put it together and it is educational by nature, right? So like you have to learn about XPubs, you have to learn about quorums, you have to learn about deviation, you have to learn about all this stuff, about seed phrases and, and randomizing the, the, the seed phrase. You have to learn about all of that right, in order to use a seed signer correctly. And then the seed signer allows you to like kind of just make wallets, multi-sig wallets on the fly, like as practice wallets or whatever. So you really got nothing to lose by picking up a seed signer um, and you can use it anywhere. This sounds like a show for seed signer. It really isn't. I was just blown away by that conversation and I really think that y'all should check out the main chain episode. 
um, that just passed by with Keith Mukai. You should check them all out. I would appreciate that love. But I understand that there's a gazillion other Bitcoin podcasts out there. And I appreciate any time that I could get with any of my listeners. So shout out to you, first time or last time listeners. And for the tribe, the ones that keep coming back, the one that keeps supporting and keep letting me know that the signal I'm spreading is not only a contagion, but the signal I'm spreading is uh, a breath of fresh air in a space where there's still a lot of influencers and they're still getting paid a lot of cuck bucks for a lot of advertisement for shit that they don't use. And here I am trying to have free speech and trying to say the things that I want to say because I really believe that, 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 that the RSS feed and micropayments over Lightning allow us to say what we want to say and have the good listeners support what we have to say. And conversely, if you don't want to support, you don't have to either. That's the cool part about it. Free market time, free market system. Love it. It's the integrity there. So with that, that's an easy segue to pull out my phone here. I'm going to go through the last seven days of delegators and voters. Remember, delegators are those that actually leave a message and boost Right. So some feedback, some thoughts and they want to say. And then the voters are y'all that just listen to the show and stream some sets. I appreciate you nonetheless, regardless of the two titles. I think it's very important to do both for your favorite podcasters as we enter this paradigm of new free speech radio. Right. Still be called podcasting, probably. But new free speech radio is where we're actually heading here, where more and more people with bigger and bigger voices are going to start to pick up this little niche of. Well, why do I need to cape to them when I could just be myself and the people that really fucks with me are going to fuck with me regardless? And uh, that's what we're trying to push here. But either way, um, let's start here. Dr. Jones Klaus. This is the first time I've seen you around, Dr. Jones. Hopefully it ain't the last time you boosted us. You're a delegator and you were, you were listening to the Start Nine episode with Matt Hill. Another fascinating episode there. Uh, I can't wait till I get my uh, Embassy Pro coming in from start nine, but check out that episode if you want to learn about uh, um, sovereign computing and being able to do that off the grid, grid, grid. <laughs> um, so Dr. Jones Klaus, appreciate that boost. Gene, 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 he really enjoyed that. See, Gene backs me on the conversation with Keith Mukai. He really enjoyed that conversation, gave a really big boost. Gene, I appreciate you, man. Um, I get a split. So 27th, I'm assuming there's about 33,000, Gene. I appreciate that. I appreciate that love. Putting you up there on the higher tier delegates, <laughs> right? You you up there. You calling shots up there at the cabinet. <laughs> I hate to use those free out terms, but Gene, great conversation on the on the multi uh on the multi sig or the C signer conversation, as I say. I agree, Gene. It was just great as I just ripped for like five minutes about it. Uh thanks, Gene. Appreciate the love. J- Dirty Jersey Whore. Also enjoyed. This is two. Two avid listeners that enjoyed that Keith Mukai conversation. You guys need to go and don't be last to check out that conversation. There's a lot of wisdom there. So Dirty Jersey whore, shout out to you, good sir. You always come every week. Very interested in the combo about Seed Tiner. Me too, man. Me too. Uh, definitely going to look into it. Also, I have one of those Start9 servers in the works. Sorry if I doxed you, Jersey whore. Uh, but... Excited for you, man. Don't worry about asking me questions. I'm going to have a million questions too. And possibly we can help each other and educate each other as we start to be more sovereign in our way of living. So that's a big step for you. And that's a big step for me to be able to say, hey, I'm going to invest in my privacy much more than your average person would. So shout out for that big boost. That was probably about 20,000 sets. 30 Jersey, you're the man. Gene, again, uh, for Solo Rip 30, I know you guys love the solo rips. I try to keep them as often and as as clear-minded as I can, uh, but there's a lot to talk about, and the original format of 30 minutes or so is kind of getting pushed lately, especially when I got to give some time to show love. Y'all are the reason this thing works. Uh, so let's keep going through. Absurdiant, appreciate you, girl. Where you been? Uh, gave me a big boost. Appreciates the hard work on Solo Rip 30, the honesty and the humbleness. <laughs> Girl, I got nothing to give here but transparency and honesty. Why? Yeah, I don't, I don't, nobody paid me to do this. Why would I sit here and make up some stuff and try to be some actor that I'm not? I am who I am. I am from where I'm from. And I think that has a lot of value to provide the world. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a truly interested uh, individual that is gone head deep into sovereignty uh, for a few years now. So I got nothing to lie about. I am Mr. Robot. Well, I know who you are, Mr. Robot. I appreciate you, good sir, not using that slim handle. Uh, talking a bit solo, Rip30. These rips just prove Bitcoin is freedom of speech, freedom to say what you want 
on here with value for value. It must be it, uh, is a must going forward. This is why we fight, Mr. Robot. This is why we work on this stuff. This is why we do this stuff, because we know damn well that there's nobody in the world that will be able to silence us if we can keep those feeds decentralized, if we can keep the voice decentralized and you know, micro payments and getting paid value is a big piece of that. People always think that, well, you could do things for free. That's absolutely real. But we also need feedback. And sometimes currency, not fiat, but Bitcoin in this example is that feedback. It's that mechanism. It lets me know you. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, y'all. It's sort of like in the fiat land, you know, like TV shows, they needed to, um, you know, they need like the uh, the, the metrics, the TV metrics from when you watched episode uh, uh, ER. Oh, man, I'm dating myself here. ER did a, a gazillion views in the first day, and we have those metrics. Well, this is how it is as well. Of course, it's currency. It's Bitcoin, but it's a feedback mechanism. Once again, y'all fucks with me, so y'all support me, and I am eternally grateful for that. So, Mr. Robot, let's keep up the good fight. Let's keep up, keep up what we're doing, and the more podcasters we work with, the more decentralized this becomes. And the uh, early we are, man. We're so early on this stuff that a lot of people still are surprised when we go up to them and say, hey, I'll help you with a podcast. Uh, but anyways, appreciate you. Now let's move on to the voters real quick. Some of these names are always here, but I still give them love. Gene Everett, Absurdian, Dirty Jersey, I Am Robot, User, blah, 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 ending in 9032. Go into your settings and give yourself a name so you don't so you can get a call out here. Patar streaming some sats. Long time listener, Patar. Tim88 has come around a few times. The Wild Hustle continues to show up. Appreciate you. Rage as fuck continues to show up. Petri, long time listener. Uh, Dr. J uh, D Jones Klaus, Permaculture. Appreciate you, Permaculture, for checking me out. I know you're an avid Texas Slim listener. User, blah, 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 ending in 3698. Yeah, once again, go to the settings, get your name figured out, but I appreciate the love. Tony Boy, I don't think I've heard you about you, Tony Boy, but I appreciate that. Identity913, appreciate you and your sets that you're streaming. If you are new to Value for Value and you're wondering, well, why the hell is he saying the same names two times? Well, remember, you can listen to the show and stream some sets, and then you can also boost with the messages. So you can actually do both of them. You can be a delegate and you can be a voter. So appreciate the love for that. We're going to be moving on here. Let me get my notes up because I'm sloppy and I haven't got my notes up yet. Hey, guys, I really don't got a lot to really talk about. I, I just realized that with my notes. But some weird... First of all, I want to say Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving was great. I don't want to stay stuck on Thanksgiving for too long. Um, I, uh, Thanksgiving was good. First one in Austin. Paid for my turkey and Bitcoin. Shout out to John from um, uh, Amber Oaks. Uh, might be on the podcast pretty soon, hopefully on the podcast pretty soon on the main chain, but basically bought my turkey and Bitcoin. It was amazing being able to walk up in the farmer's market, talk to John, shake his hand, be able to pull out my phone. This is the cool part that I always tell my kids that that they don't really get, uh, well, that a lot of people don't get. They're just kids, but a lot of people don't get it. Like I was able to walk up to John and pay off a balance without knowing what app he had without caring what protocol he right well bitcoin is the protocol but you know what i mean like no hey do you have cash app hey do you have a, a venmo oh no oh no well i can move it from my bank to my cash app to my venmo so that i could pay you but oh uh, by the way through that whole process you and i are going to be getting milked for money nope walked up how much you how much i owe you let me see that turkey oh amazing beautiful because john does nothing but good stuff let me see that QR code for the balance. Scan that bad boy up in front of the kids. And with lightning, instantaneous settlement, John had his well hard-earned money, real hard money, not fiat. And I got an amazing, delicious turkey that I was able to eat during Thanksgiving. But Thanksgiving is great. I'm thankful. You can listen to the last solo rip. I, you know, I, I just very thankful guy and very lucky to be working with and have the relationships that I have right now and be in the space that I want to be in with just Bitcoin and continue to pioneer not only free speech, but be able to push Bitcoin forward with information and the cool relationships that I get to have. So that's how Thanksgiving was for me. Bunch of food, used it as the day. I know, I know carnivores, I know. Yesterday was a pie day for me. Had a lot of stuffing, had a lot of mac and cheese, had some proteins, uh, some meat, uh, but definitely a small scale and definitely... My wife made some like apple turnover thing. Uh, it's not an apple turnover. That actually does it an injustice. But it was like some apple thing that was just amazing. So, yep, bounce back today. But yesterday was a day to pick out. And I hope y'all did the same out there. 
Definitely talk Bitcoin. All right. Like we're watching some hard money. Shout out to hard money, by the way. I think I'm late on hard money on Swan Bitcoin. Um, shout out to Swan Studios, first of all, because I love how engaged they are and how much they invest in, in media because it's very important. Uh, but hard money is a really good show for somebody who doesn't watch the TV often and sort of like these solo rips. I love like the 30 minute version where they kind of give you a segment, bang, 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 bang. And then you get all the news that you need from financial to Bitcoin. Uh, and they do really good editing work. Uh, shout out to, to them. But I was watching Hard Money, some of the old episodes. Uh, my sister was here and, uh, you know, her family and her boyfriend, my nephew. And we were able to watch like the lightning uh, one, the one about uh, the uh, uh, Federal Reserve. By the way, if y'all don't know this, it's it's super fast. And I knew this, but I was reminded when I saw that episode, the fact that the Financial Reserve, it's not part of the government and also doesn't have any reserves. It's mind boggling. Just think about that. That it's not federal and it doesn't hold reserves, but it's called the Federal Reserve and they control money. I pause on purpose for that. That is mind boggling. But anyway, shout out to Swan and them. So we did talk some Bitcoin, uh, helping my sister move her stack over to some multi-signature. Uh, I think I know a thing or two about that. But thankfully, haha, another plug, Keith Mukai episode. Y'all can learn about that. Um, I wanted to bring up this um, Jason Lowry situation um, because I think it's it, it, it's uh, there's a conversation happening, depending on when you hear this, Monday with Marty and Jason Lowry. And Jason Lowry uh, sounds like a very, I've, I've heard of him before, not follow him, follow him very loosely, but he has this, uh, um, you know, his, his resume, as according to his profile, is very, you know, Reputable. It's a U.S. Space Force, MIT, class of 23. Um, so he's still in MIT? All right. Anyways, U.S. National Defense Fellow. Um, and, and, and that's, you know, so he, he, what I'm understanding is, is he comes with this military background to Bitcoin. So I'm going to butcher this. I know because I just started really catching up on this today. So I still haven't really got the whole context of it. But I thought on a light episode here, when we're coming off a holiday, you know, something to talk about really quick here. Um, and the conversation that I'm very interested in on Monday with Marty, and, and that's a fantastic conversation to have. But um, Jason Lowry basically is posting about like how he wants to orange pill the Pentagon, right? And then he's, he's speaking about Bitcoin in this, in this uh, language of it being like a soft war protocol and saying that World War III has probably already been happening, right? And then the, the winners and the losers of that war you know, don't know that they're in it or don't know that until one of them claims it and says it, uh, I'm butchering that. That's just what I'm getting from some soft uh, war protocol. Now, I heard a lot of people response. I also noticed that Jason Lowry is blocking anybody that questions this, which, you know, have led some people to call him a spook. Uh, but to me, it's just dumb, right? Like, why you have if you stand on a hill... Right. Like you guys know I'm on the free speech hill, Bitcoin pro. Yeah, if somebody comes at me with that question, I need to be able to answer that question. I think so. Or at least entertain some questions and be able to be proven wrong or be proven even more right. So uh, anyways, uh, one of them that really stuck out to me, one feedback here is John Vallis. And John Vallis, no surprise to nobody. Um, you know, amazing Maxi, amazing Bitcoiner, one of the better shows that I've listened to. Don't listen to it often. Sorry, John, being honest. Uh, but I do enjoy what John does and I do enjoy John's point of view. And if there's one thing as a creator that I really enjoy from John Vallis is, is that he hosts plebs on his show. Like he doesn't have this thing where he's like too good to be talking to people. Like he'll have the average person like you or me basically just be on there. And I think that's really great as a creator. But I'm going to try to skim through this really quick for the sake of time. I'll leave the link in the show notes. I very much appreciate your work. Uh, John Lowry and his contributions to my ongoing attempt to answer the question which many of us obsessively grapple with, which is, what is Bitcoin? I also grapple with this. I think every Bitcoiner does because it means so many different things to so many different people. He continues, of course, almost nothing is ever exclusively just one thing. Indeed, things are what they are used for. This is a great example he's about to drop here. A stick can be used as a weapon, a support structure, a walking aid, even a piece of art. Therefore, it would be wrong to say a stick as anything of these things. That's a fact. About as bold and clean as and well articulated as you can make it. It would damn the police. You guys hear the police, man? I don't know if these 
something's going on near the crib. Hopefully all is well, but the police is here uh, audio bombing, I guess. But anyways, um, it would be it, it would be instead be more appropriate to say that the stick can be used for blank. That is the utility of the thing that's very much determined by our desired end. More broadly, our very uh, our ends very much determine how we perceive things, right? So what John is basically trying to say is is that you and I've done it on this show before, which is why this has intrigued me. I've talked about Bitcoin as the weapon, right? I've talked to Eric Kaysen about this. Go check out that episode where he talks about this is the spear. I've heard uh, Savetsky talk about it as the lightning rod, right? I've heard it in many different, I've used it myself where it's like Bitcoin is the ultimate weapon, right? Bitcoin is the thing that's going to allow us to win the war of monetary freedom, of hard money, of sovereignty, right? But I, there's a very, tr- you can tread very carefully on me using that as an analogy and it being used against Bitcoin. What, what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is you have a whole part of a population, which is mostly us that listen to the show, that basically say Bitcoin is freedom technology, number go up technology, sovereign technology, right? Like Bitcoin can solve remittance. Bitcoin can be transferred around the world. Bitcoin separates money and state, right? Like these are, are like, what Bitcoin is doing and what it is or whatever. And then there's a um, another side where they're basically saying, oh, well, Bitcoin can be used to elicit illegal activity. Bitcoin could be used to buy handguns on the internet. Bitcoin could be used for sex trafficking. Bitcoin could be used to cover up the tracks of, you know, drug dealers and all this stuff, right? There's those two crowds right there. And the thing that I think John Val is here, and I think I'm kind of leaning on here, and I say I think because I do want to hear his conversation with Marty on Monday to see how it is. But I think what Bitcoin is leaning here is, whoa, 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 whoa. Be careful, right, what words you use, not only to explain Bitcoin, but to try to orange pill an already military-focused-minded organization such as the Pentagon. So Jason's argument could be is, is that it's true, right? We are fighting a war and this is, you know, how we win this war and privacy technology. That, that's true. But you need to be very careful because they can use that now to go ahead and turn some regulation to try to enhance a CBDC or try to enhance some type of weird law or regulation, like I said, that will basically go against Bitcoin under the premise of Bitcoin being a, quote unquote, weapon, Right. So the language here needs to be very clean. The language here needs to be very uh, organized because that can possibly happen. Now, if you got your keys and you got your Bitcoin, so what? Bring it, right? And if you're fed up with the system, like I'm fed up with the system, and if you're fed up with what's going on like I am, well, guess what? You're willing to say that this is the weapon because this is your way out. This is your spear. This is your, your weapon of choice. This is what you're opting out with. That's why I'm interested in hearing this conversation, because that is a very slippery slope that I agree with in both senses. And like John Valen says, you could use a stick to whack a, a pinata or whack a person in the head and kill him, right? Or you can use a stick to support something up that's a you know beautiful structure or that you need help with or something of that nature, right? Like, or you can use wood to burn it, to turn it into something else like the fire and to be able to heat yourself and warm yourself. Each of those perspectives sees the stick in a different light. But it's still just a stick. So I don't know how this goes. I don't know how this conversation goes, but I thought it was very intriguing and I want to bring it up. And I love, I love, I love, and I know Marty's a 2.0 advocate. I love that these conversations could actually happen without a fear of it being censored. And if it does get censored, it's all good. We know where to find it. That's the beautiful part about this thing. And that's the beautiful part about being able to to free speech it. Um, Yeah, yeah. Get your keys, get into custody, but... And this, that's the, the the previous part of this episode. But this part right here kind of goes in line with that because regardless what side of that fence you lie on, regardless if you're the one that continues to call it a weapon and wants to use it to strike down whatever, uh, the economy, whatever it may be, and the ones that just see it as like, oh, this is just a better alternative that does that stuff better that can solve the majority of the world's problems by fixing the incentives, right? Those two are waging for the future of Bitcoin. My thought is, is that Bitcoin doesn't give a shit. Bitcoin is going to continue what it does. People are going to continue to go look for the hardest money. And there's only one that is the hardest money by design, by protocol, by all that stuff. So I don't think that this is a big deal in that. But when you're talking about something that's moving momentum and moving speed, 
right, which is like the adoption rate of Bitcoin, there is resistance on Bitcoin that slow it down, the adoption, and there is things that, you know, speed up Bitcoin adoption, right? And that's that's a battle that's going on. I don't know if you guys have ever been to like Bitstamp, right? And you like kind of look at like the traders and like, and this is just an analogy I'm going to use. I don't trade, uh, but for work purposes, I got to check out Bitstamp every so often. Um, you'll see at the bottom, they have like this graph of like these two sides, like literally having a war in real time. The bears and the bulls having a war in real time. Like it just goes back and forth, bang, bang, bang. And I think when it comes to the adoption of Bitcoin, that's constantly happened. There's the world that's, there's a, there's a side, I should say, that's telling the world how to use this to solve sovereignty problems and solve a lot of these bad incentives that are in place. And then there's another, those are the bulls. And then there's another side that's trying to figure out how to FUD Bitcoin, how to bring it down because they either, are, their incentives line up with bringing it down. That's the easiest way to say that. Um, and I think we don't see it that way, but we watch it happen in real time. And I think this is another example of that. We need to not let the bears win in that sense. We need to let the bulls win. And we need to educate the world on the benefits of Bitcoin. Being able to pay the farmer instantly. Being able to pay the the, the service instantly. Being able to uh, send that across the globe with no middlemen being able to take that away from you. Being able to... Uh, um, all that stuff that we know. right? Being able to exchange your value, your time for something that's not going to depreciate or, or, or uh, inflate away, I should say. Melt like an ice cube. These are all things that we need to be educating. Sovereignty of custody, being able to own something. Look around, right? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you're good. Maybe you're more sovereign. Look around at the things you think you own. Do you actually own those things? Think about it. Do you own your car? Do you own where you live at? Do you own, what, what, what is it that you own? The Jordans that you got in, in, your, in the corner of your closet that you haven't worn for like three years? <laughs> What do you got? What do you got that belongs to you? What do you got that you can keep that you can care? I don't know. Good question to ask yourself. But like to be able to say that I own Bitcoin, like it's mine. Nobody can do anything about it, right? Digital energy. By the way, I was watching something about Nikola Tesla earlier. That's just wild. Like he had like 80 trunks of like blueprints and like scientific papers that were like basically stolen when he died. Uh, guess who? Just take two seconds and think about it. Who would cover something up like that? But like crazy mind boggling and stuff like wireless electricity. And I don't mean like putting your Apple watch down on this little pad and, the, and you know, not plugging in the, the thing. I'm talking about like, you know, flying cars. I'm talking about like if we have energy that's wireless, it can propel a car to stay up in the air uh, with the electric current, like that type of thing. Um, cell phone technology in 1901. Just think about that stuff. Anyways, <laughs> I got off on a side tangent, but... You know, my point is that is that we need to be able to win. We are going to win, but do understand that the Bears ain't playing. The Bears are here to do something, and I'm not calling Jason Lowry a Bear. Um, I'm actually not even really extremely versed on what Jason Lowry has brought to Bitcoin besides a few writings and a few things. Uh, I know the man got like 80,000 followers, so he must be doing something. Uh, nowadays, I'm scared to say right. Like, I don't know how you get 80,000 followers. Are they paid? Are you doing something right? Are you a spook? Uh, I don't know. But, the, you know, if you were to go off of that metric, 80,000 followers that are paying attention to whatever he's posting, uh, that might be somebody who's contributing something here. So I don't know whether this ends super, uh, check, uh, you know, super interested in checking out that conversation. But to me, I just sleep better at night by just slowly but surely, you know, not not being the low hanging fruit. I want to buy a, a, a Start9 Embassy Pro because I want to be more fucking sovereign in my communication. And I want obviously, I want a, a newer Bitcoin node and a Lightning node, a more reliable one. I want my passwords to be, you know, protected by me, right? Not by somebody else. So I'm going to go there. I want to meet as many ranchers as possible and shake their hand and learn about the food because I want to be in control of that, right? Like I'm just doing these small things. And my biggest mission, my biggest driver is, is, Un freeing and unleashing the voice of others, right? Like not by speaking for them on their behalf, but empowering them, right? To have their own solution to what they want to say. A lot of us sit around depressed all fucking day because we don't have a voice. We don't have a pendulum. And although writing is very effective, it's only one way of doing things. And a lot of people nowadays don't even want to write, right? 
That's hard. That's me included, by the way. And I wrote a book before, so writing is extremely hard. And there's no guarantee that people are going to actually read it. Just like there's no guarantee that people are going to listen, right? But in my opinion, you have a much higher rate of somebody listening to you than actually reading it. So I have, I'm going, I'm fighting on the hill of, right? Some people say I'm going to die on that hill. I probably will. But I'm going to keep working on the hill of unleashing the voice and using Bitcoin and Lightning, right? As the, as the, as the, the, the railway mechanism to be able to receive support and to stay active because just like a long distance runner may need some water, well, creatives need to be funded somehow. That's just a fact. You can't continue to live, especially in this expensive ass fiat world. You can't continue to live right, if you're not receiving some type of funding. And the way we get to say what we want to say is by not getting cucked and taking the funding from them. We get the funding through y'all, through the people, through the people that care about it. And with that, I can now focus on telling you how I feel, being transparent and helping other creators spread that same message, receive that same value, and understand that the more voices we have, the harder it is to take over, to, to, to shut down the word. That's how decentralized networks work, right? So if, like, let's use the COVID example again, which has been exhausted, but if there's one Joe Rogan or there's one big podcaster that's talking about it, they will shut that shit down as fast as they can get to it. But if there's 10, 20, 30, hundreds of voices saying the same exact thing, all different spectrums of, of, uh, um, uh, uh, of, of clout, right? Like a popularity saying the same thing. It's whack-a-mole at that point. You can't do anything to slow that down. And as we continue to see the clown world evolve in front of our eyes and we continue to see some of the weirdest behavior I've ever seen from human beings in my life, right? Then you get to understand that we need to be able to point that shit out as weird and be able to decentralize that thought, be able to get other people that think that that's weird, that give their take on it so that we can actually expose this stuff and be like, wait a minute, something weird is going on or something uh, um, evil is going on. And the more voices can say it, the harder it is to whack the mole and the more we get out and we get more freedom. So that wraps up a pretty damn loose solo rip 31. And what I mean by loose is you know, we got into random conversation that ended up being great conversation. And remember, the point of these conversations is so you can bring it into your workday, you can bring it into the gym, and you can have these conversations further. Be careful how we talk about Bitcoin because we don't want to give the bears the bad ammunition that to, to, to basically make this harder for us to slow down this, this inevitable behavior of Bitcoin, right? We want to speed it up. That's what we want to do. So be careful with that. And if you don't want the risk to have to deal with the drama, if you want to sleep at night about Bitcoin, go get yourself either a seed signer or some type of cold storage education. Go to Unchain. Go wherever you need to go. Make sure that those 12 to 24 words are there for you when you need it the most. And that's when you are in most need of freedom and sovereignty. And that's what the Bitcoin protocol will a lot for you. I appreciate y'all as always. That wraps up Solo Rip 31. None of this would be possible without y'all. And I'm just going to try to keep the momentum coming. I know I keep saying every week that I got big news. I do got some big news coming up. But big things usually take time to figure out. And big things need to be worked on so that they can be done correct. More news to come. I appreciate y'all. As always, you know where to find us. Fountain and Breeze is the easiest way to load up on the wallet and go. Well, the ways that I use at least. Show us some love. Stream us some sets. Make your voice heard. Right, boost in a little, give your thoughts. And if you want this content, Bitcoin TV is the place to go for video content, 4K content. And we are also on those legacy platforms so that you can share it with your friend, rate the out, you know, flirt with the algorithm, rate, share, subscribe, and more people can start moving over to the Bitcoin standard of inevitable freedom media. Until next week, y'all. Take care. Later.